What sets this club sandwich apart is the freshly roasted chicken breast. And let me show you how I like to do it. A very easy to do, and if you're making club sandwiches, you should do a whole breast cut in half or two or three if you have a large family or a large gathering. Salt and pepper, clean, beautiful, fresh chicken breasts. And preheat your oven to 375 degrees. This makes the tastiest chicken for sandwiches. Better than poaching, actually. So just put that right into your 375 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. So this is a roasted chicken breast. You can take the skin off if you like, but I kind of like the skin on my sandwich. This chicken roasted like this is also really good shredded for chicken salad. So there, and we're using a lovely toasted white bread for the sandwich. Here we have it, it's actually a brioche, which is beautiful. Slather each piece with homemade mayonnaise, if possible, or store-bought. And another thing people forget to do on sandwiches is to salt and pepper the sandwich. So, we have the toast. You can layer the chicken right on one slice. Yummy, so good looking. And each one of these is a separate layer, so you want to build the same sandwich on both. So chicken, chicken. Beautiful slice of tomato. Now some avocado. So you can actually slice your avocado right in the shell. Layer your avocado right onto the tomato. The best, best ingredients make really, really good sandwiches. Fresh avocado, perfectly ripe. And here we have our bacon. Don't forget a little bit of salt and pepper. And now top with lettuce. This crispy iceberg lettuce will help hold the sandwich together. So then this one goes on top of this one. Now a little bit more mayo. And a sweet and sour gherkin. You can use bread and butter pickles, dill pickles, sweet and sour gherkins, but that is a club sandwich that you will remember. Now, once you have it skewered with the toothpicks, then with a serrated knife, you can actually cut it in half. And put this towering kind of dagwood club right on a sandwich plate, served with pickles, skewered with toothpicks. This is a club sandwich everyone will remember. It's an easy way to make an ordinary lunchtime really special and delicious. There you have it. And now for the po' boy, P-O apostrophe B-O-Y. It's a sandwich, a New Orleans gastronomic masterpiece. And it was created in the 1920s by two grocers who served it free to striking streetcar workers that they called poor boys. There are countless fillings from shrimp to catfish, soft shell crabs, sliced meats. Today I'm piling my po' boy mile high with fried oysters. Frying oysters, delicate but good. Into one cup of buttermilk, add a half a teaspoon of pepper, freshly ground black pepper, and a teaspoon of salt, and about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So that is our liquid. The oysters have been shucked. Now we have 48 oysters, four dozen. They are plump, they are clean, and they are going to just have a bath of buttermilk. And you can sort of Stir them around a little bit. You want to keep the oysters from getting mashed, mushed. You want nice, big, plump oysters. So there, now we have a cup of cornmeal, fresh cornmeal, and one cup of unbleached flour, and just a pinch of cayenne. Stir this together. You can whisk it with a little whisk. This is our coating for the oysters. Gives a little crunch, and rather than have a tempura-like batter, this is just a nice little crispy coating on the oysters. And a little bit of salt, 
and a little bit of pepper. There, mix that up. The oil is at 350 degrees. This is a canola oil. You can use canola, you can use safflower. And I'm just using my fingers because this way I can be sure that uh, the oysters are going to be well coated and just drop one at a time. So use one hand for the oyster and one hand for the coating. And you can put them around here like that if you wish. Save a little time. But don't pour all of these into the cornmeal. They're so pretty. They take just about four minutes or so. I think that first batch is ready to come out. So if you thought that frying oysters was time consuming, you can see that it really isn't. Now while they're still warm, sprinkle those with a little bit of salt. I love this spider because it really does allow you to get the food out of the oil without too much grease. After they're done, uh, you're going to toast your buns. And these are top split buns, which are typical for lobster rolls. Doing very well here. So real important to watch the temperature of your oil, monitor it so it does not get too cool. There, okay, the oysters look great. And these are ready for our sandwiches. So now, toast the rolls. These are those top split buns. Just put them on a griddle pan and toast on both sides. And make sure you butter this side and that side. And 48 oysters, enough oysters for eight poor boys. All right, and now the tartar sauce. A third of a cup of homemade mayonnaise, some cornichon, about three tablespoons of cornichon, about two tablespoons of capers, and you can rinse the capers. Uh, shallot, very important ingredient in a good homemade tartar sauce. One shallot, finely chopped, and the juice of a whole lemon. Just squeeze that right into your tartar sauce. Mm, there. And this is good made yesterday for today. So now to assemble these wonderful sandwiches, just open the roll, put as many oysters as you possibly can. Now, don't you want to sink your teeth into this? Oh, so tasty. And top with some tartar sauce. Soft on the inside, crispy on the outside. You're going to love this New Orleans favorite, Pool Boys. In 1906, Senor Lupo Salvadore, a New Orleans grocer, saw that some of his customers struggled juggling their lunch items, bread, salami, cheese, and olives. Ingeniously, he came up with a way to combine them all in a sandwich and called it a muffuleta, named for the round bread on which it was made. Now, I'm using a white country boule, a round country bread, and I've cut it in half, and I'm gonna take out just the center, all the bready bread. This you can turn into bread crumbs. You can eat it, or you can give it to the birds. But it gives you lots of room to build this muffaletta sandwich. Do the same thing with the bottom half. Comes out very easily. And what makes this muffaletta is the wonderful olive salad that we use to flavor the sandwich. Okay, so the bread is ready. Now the olives. Get yourself one of these little olive pitters if you like. Stick it in here like this and watch. The seed comes right out. And there is your olive. So this is perfect for small oil cured olives, but it will not work for these giant green olives. So the easiest way is just to cut the olive off the pit like this. Now I have the olives already chopped. Six ounces of green olives, finely chopped. Two ounces of the oil cured olives, finely chopped. One salt packed anchovy filet, finely chopped also. And some fresh herbs. We have oregano, 
thyme, and parsley. So stir this around. Add a quarter of a cup of olive oil. And two tablespoons of a red wine vinegar. Two. Some salt and pepper. Now this has to be made the day before. I'll refrigerate it and just let it sit so all the flavors meld. One last flavoring, and that's a little bit of hot sauce. And don't forget the lemon, very important. The juice of half a lemon. Cover with plastic wrap and refrigerate overnight. And we have one already made. It does change color a little bit. So we're ready to start. We can start with a little bit of the olive mixture, just a little bit in the bottom of the bread, and then delicious mortadella, and whatever way you really feel like layering this. Mortadella is this big loaf. It's kind of the original bologna. It's a very large smoked sausage, and uh, it's studded with cubes of pork fat, peppercorns, sometimes uh, pistachios, and or green olives. But here is a beautiful soprasata, some finocchiona, salami, fontina cheese. You can really make up your own mix, but you wanna have each layer pretty complete like that. So that when you slice this, everybody gets some. Some more of the olive. Mm. Now this is a great, great sandwich to make for a long weekend with guests in your house with a big green salad. Oh, and don't forget some arugula. Another slice of mortadella. And every muffaletta is a little different from every other. Provolones, this is a copa, and this lovely soprasata. This is spicy. And we have another spicy thing to add, and these are those delicious pepperdus. These are a little tiny red pepper that's pickled in kind of a sweet hot sauce. Really cute. Keep going. I could put a little bit more olive on here. A little more arugula. And arugula is a bitter green. Try to get small pungent leaves. Okay, and one more layer here. And the last bit of olive. So the olive is good to top it with because this is going to soak into the top layer of the bread because we've made room for the mound. Now cover with this. Put this in the middle of your plastic wrap and draw the plastic wrap all the way around your bread. You're going to encase this in the plastic wrap and you are going to press it underneath a heavy weight and it will be ready pressed for tomorrow's picnic. So this is a very heavy cast iron pot that can just stay on it like that. It goes into the refrigerator. <laughs> Make sure that you have room in your refrigerator for such a weight. If you don't have it for this big a pot, you can take a smaller frying pan, heavy frying pan, and fill it with uh, canned tomatoes or something like that. But anything that's really heavy that will weight it down and cause all those delicious flavors to sort of meld together. So this is the sandwich I made yesterday. Take off the heavy pot. It's changed quite a bit in volume. It is not as high. You can unwrap it. Mm, it looks good. It smells really good. So there is our funny, funny muffaletta. Looks like a big, flat sandwich. And you cut this into wedges for your picnic. Use a very sharp bread knife. Curious to see the perfect layers. Looks very delicious. Cut this one into thirds. And if you want a smaller piece, cut it into eighths. What a nice way to serve a large group a make-ahead sandwich. What could be better than that? Muffaletta. One of the best sandwiches I've ever had is the 
bacon and egg and cheese sandwich at a little cheese shop right here in New York City. It is delicious. Fontina cheese, fried egg, bacon, and English muffin. So I thought I'd show you how to make my favorite breakfast sandwich. Grated cheese, sliced cheese, bacon, highest quality bacon you can find. And it can't be bacon that's been sitting around, cooked for a long time. It has to be freshly cooked like this. English muffin, just warm it on the griddle, outside first, then turn it over and toast the inside. And I'm going to find the biggest, nicest egg I have. It's a toss up, I think this one. And we're gonna fry the egg right in the bacon grease. The bacon can stay in there. And just break your egg right into the same pan. Does not look good. I always sprinkle my fried eggs with a little bit of salt and pepper. And I don't turn them over. So now our English muffin is nicely toasted. Put on some Fontina cheese. Don't break the yolk. If you break the yolk, fry another egg. And if you like, you can just take a little bit of the bacon grease and pour it over the yolk. That helps cook the yolk. There. Bacon looks done. So now on top of the egg, put a little bit of grated fontina right on top, melt into the egg. And this is getting nice and soft. A little bit of pepper. Put your bacon right on top. Looking good. And our egg is done. This goes on top of the bacon. I think I better build this right on my plate. And this muffin goes right on top. Now that's my favorite egg sandwich. And I think it's the perfect way to start your day. A Reuben sandwich, warm, juicy layers of corned beef, melted Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, and Russian dressing. Sandwich between toasted rye bread. That's what a Reuben is all about. I'm buttering the outside of two nice slices of seeded rye. And this sandwich was thought to have been created by a New York delicatessen owner, Arthur Rubin, who reportedly made it with ham for Charlie Chaplin's leading lady in a film shot in the early 1900s. How's that for a bit of trivia? Well, here now, put the buttered side down and start layering. This is thinly sliced corned beef. And you need about, per sandwich, three ounces because the best jellies don't skimp. So we're gonna be the best deli making this Reuben sandwich. And fold it over. Try to make the meat as even thickness as possible. Yum. And then we have lovely Swiss cheese. And another layer. And, oh, we're missing the Russian dressing. So I think homemade Russian dressing is the best. A third of a cup of mayo, some sweet pickle relish, just about two tablespoons, some ketchup, Again, about two tablespoons. Stir this together. And this you can just keep in a little jar in the refrigerator for your liverwurst sandwiches, your corned beef sandwiches, your Reuben sandwiches. A nice sprinkling of black pepper, about a half a teaspoon of salt, and secret ingredient, Worcestershire sauce. Just about a teaspoon. Mmm, yummy. That is a very nice Russian dressing. So, oh, you could also put a little bit of lemon juice in here. I think that would be a good idea. If your lemon has one of those little 
nobbins on it. You can cut that off. It squeezes better. Just about a teaspoon of lemon juice. That is good Russian dressing. So now sauerkraut, about a half a cup of nice German sauerkraut, which is basically fermented pickled cabbage. And put a lot of Russian dressing right here on the unbuttered side of the bread. The buttered side is going to be cooked, and that's what helps toast the rye bread. So a nice slathering of Russian dressing. And put that right over. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And get this into a slightly warm pan. And let it toast both sides. And so now when you think it's nice and brown, flip it. And that looks really good. Just about done. The cheese is nice and soft. The bread is nice and toasted. Remove it to a board. Because I think you're going to want to cut this in half. So pretty. Oh, wow. This is a great looking sandwich. And warning, this sandwich is so juicy and so delicious that you might need a few extra napkins. Eat this up while it's still hot and toasty. I think you'll really enjoy all the sandwiches I showed you. They do make a meal. Thanks so much for watching and please tune into the next episode of Cooking School. Using a pastry blender, mash together 10 hard boiled egg whites and two hard boiled egg yolks. Mash half an avocado and roughly chop the other half. Carefully fold them into the hard boiled eggs. Then stir in two tablespoons of light mayonnaise, one teaspoon Dijon mustard, and one tablespoon lemon juice. Season with coarse salt and pepper. Place on toasted bread and top with lettuce and tomato. Top with another slice of toast and serve.